Hey, Ms. Mahawk here. I wanted to share something that I'm experimenting with right now in the podcasting and monetization world. It's something that I really wish back in 2016 when I started my podcast that I wish I was implementing. I just really didn't see how it would work out for me. I mean, I had an Audible partnership where I was promoting audiobooks and my audience really loved getting like a reading list from me. So I did remember getting like a $10 check from Amazon, but that was really the extent of my success with affiliate marketing. So in 2022, my views on this are totally different because there's just so much more massive opportunity for smaller creators even to make a ton of money with this stream. Let's talk about what affiliate marketing is really quick in at least how I view it. It's basically so that you, you don't have to fulfill on a product or service that is already built. So think about something like a protein supplement, okay? You don't have to go take care of the manufacturing or understand even really how that works, right? If you really believe in a supplement, that could be something that your audience really enjoys, for example. And you might have some sort of a sign up code where you make a certain amount of money when somebody signs up. And that is, in a nutshell, a form of affiliate marketing. Now, this can be a total dead end for most people if you don't approach it right. And so I'm gonna share what's worked with me. I mean, I haven't, full transparency, I have not made like a crazy amount of money with this. I mean, maybe a couple hundred dollars or something. So I don't see it being a viable source of 100% of your revenue, unless you have figured out the reach and, and people are really interested in your show, you're doing a lot of volume in terms of downloads, then hey, it's probably gonna be a good option. It is something I recommend no matter how small your following is that you set up from the beginning because if you have an idea of what products or services your audience or future listeners will actually enjoy, then you wanna set up the structure for them to be able to actually get connected with those products or services. Now, I signed up for Amazon associates and that's where you can basically link up Amazon products like microphones, or headphones, or anything you really want, books, and you make a certain percentage off of that product. And in each category, it's different. For example, I just looked up that like, if you sell an automotive part, you get 4.5%. And if let's say the part is $1,000, you've just made like I don't know, I think it was like $135 or something like that. Regardless, it was a decent amount of money, but you'd have to sell a lot of those parts for it to return back into even, let's say, $1,000, right? But for not really having to do any of the work or making this part or delivering it or any of those things, I mean, 135 bucks is a pretty sweet deal if you enjoy really just talking about stuff that's in that world, right? So affiliate marketing doesn't work if you're just signing up for random products and promoting them to your audience because they'll feel it. They'll feel that you don't like this thing, you don't use it, it's not necessary. So Amazon Associates can be great. It's something I absolutely recommend setting up because once you do, you basically can copy an ID or code that you then put into genie.us. And that link, that link tracking service, basically whenever you link an Amazon product, it will connect it to your Amazon ID or whatever. And so they are very strict with how they want you to track where clicks are coming from and where you're displaying these things. And so when you connect it to genie.us, it automatically pulls and sources all of that information. So you don't really get in trouble with Amazon associates. But the real money, in my opinion, is going to be in finding the top three to five products or services that your audience will use. So for example, let's use me and helping people start or grow a podcast. I know that you're gonna need some sort of hosting service. So Buzzsprout is something that I love and I have signed up for. I've migrated all of my clients over from Libsyn to Buzzsprout. So I really believe in it. And they have a sweet deal where when you sign up, you get $20 or something like that, a gift card. And then I also get 20 or 25 bucks. And I put it up in my descriptions in each of my videos once I had gotten this promotion link. And I didn't really think anybody was gonna be clicking on it. But before that, I'm getting $25 payments sent to my PayPal. And I'm like, where is this coming from? And it was from Buzzsprout. So I didn't have to do any extra work. I talked about something I was really excited about. And even though I don't get thousands or millions of views or anything, uh, 
like that, the right people who found my blog article or who found a video where I was talking about hosting signed up for it. Number two, Riverside.fm. Riverside.fm is a service that I know every person that I work with, for the most part, they're gonna be doing a podcast remotely. They may be doing some in-person episodes, but they're gonna be connecting with guests or co-hosts through the internet, which makes Riverside.fm a perfect solution. It's something I believe in. It's something a lot of my clients use. It's a little bit better than Zoom, especially if you or your guest experience frequent internet issues. It'll really preserve the highest quality file. Now, commonality between Buzzsprout and Riverside.fm so far is that they both have affiliate programs that are available. I believe for Riverside I had to submit something and it took a little bit of more time to review, but Buzzsprout has something that's available where, hey, if you do promote this to somebody else and they sign up, everybody gets a link and there's no real barrier to getting that and promoting it and starting to make money from it. If you think about it, the company you're working with wins, right? Buzzsprout, they get a lot of signups and the right people, and you get to be the person who saved somebody a lot of time and energy and money possibly with an amazing solution for whatever problem they're dealing with. Now, the third product service that's an example here is ConvertKit. ConvertKit is something that I love. It's essential for me and my business. I've quit it and gone with Active Campaign and Aweber, MailChimp, all that stuff. And then I've also come back to it. So it's something I really have a good experience knowing how to navigate. A lot of my clients, I recommend this to as well. That was a harder process to get approved. It took several months before I got an affiliate link. But the commonality with all three of these is that they give you more money than signing up for 4%, 10% off of a microphone or headphones or whatever you might be selling. I mean, it's good to have that as well, but you wanna pick three to five products you almost can guarantee your listener is going to need at some point just because they're in that world. For example, if you take Buzzsprout, $25. I mean, you'd have to sell a lot of microphones probably or a lot of whatever to get to $25 in commissions. So you want to figure out what are the top three, five products or services where they already have an affiliate program that you can easily sign up for. And if not, do not let that discourage you. Reach out to the people that own that product or service and see if you can set up some form of agreement. A lot of people would be really, really happy to do this. Honestly, Affiliate marketing for the person who is getting the sign up or whatever, almost like having a salesperson out there promoting stuff for you without really having to pay them until that sale comes in. Now, the way that you would guarantee that people are actually signing up for this stuff is to make sure that in your descriptions for your podcast episodes and your YouTube videos and even in your welcome sequences in your newsletter or maybe even in blog posts on your website, you have these links actually built in so that people can easily, wherever they find it, tap on to ConvertKit or Buzzsprout in my case and actually sign up. Remember to watch my link tracking video with genie.us so that you're not using the same, even whatever ConvertKit gives me that link, I customize that for each platform, for YouTube, for Podmahal, and even if it's on different YouTube channels or different podcast feeds, I will use different links so I know where those clicks are coming from. So affiliate marketing is not your end all be all solve for podcasts monetization, but it is a big part of it if you set it up correctly. And that usually means finding independent people outside of Amazon that are going to give you cash, not just like, hey, I'll give you a free year's worth of hosting on Buzzsprout or something. Try to find places that will actually give you cash. Podmahal, for example, something that I use with a couple people is they have their own kind of codes. And if they bring anybody in that actually signs up for, let's say, our done for you production, they get a hundred bucks cash. You can see that's actually motivating. If you don't need podcast help, people who do, or they might, or let's use any other example in that. Let's say that you're a fitness coach, but you don't really do nutrition. You can partner up with some type of a, let's say a meal delivery service or some type of a nutrition solution that you actually believe in. You don't want to actually promote stuff that is just against your ethics and your morals. And it's like, if you don't believe in meal delivery service, then don't do that. But you want it to be a solution that is aligned with you or your audience because ultimately they are the ones who are going to support this and sign up for this so it really needs to be a no-brainer for them i honestly don't really rely on affiliate marketing to make 
any money. I use it as like a bonus. It feels like a surprise to me when it comes in, but I will share more data with you as I figure this stuff out over time. If you decide to give this a go, make sure to drop a comment or reach out Ms. at podmahal.com. I would love to hear from you and make sure to check out the description for free tools and resources like podcast planners, promotion planners, and monetization maps and all that good stuff. But thank you so much for hanging out. If you enjoyed this video, watch some of these or save them for later and I'll see you next time.